So Nick, your most recent paper is on the genetic specificity of face recognition. But could you just start by telling us a little bit about face recognition um, and why it's interesting and important to study? Well, face recognition is a very important social skill. Um, it's been um, widely studied for um, a long time, for, for decades really, in lots of different ways. And it's been found to be um, unusual uh, in comparison to other abilities and even to recognising other kinds of objects in quite a, a lot of different ways. Um, just as, as one example, um, face recognition has been sort of studied in, in relation to different sort of perceptual effects and um, sort of visual illusions and that sort of thing. And there are lots of effects that seem to um, emerge specifically for faces or for images of faces, um, but not for other kinds of things. And so, so given all of that background, we were interested to study this area in the context of a twin study and see whether this ability might be unusual as well in the um, sort of context of the sorts of things that a twin study can tell us. So what kinds of things do twin studies allow us to, to see? Um, twin studies and, and various other similar sorts of methods allow us to um, tease apart the genetic and environmental influences on, on traits. Um, and also, if we, if we look at different traits together, um, they allow us to see the extent to which those um, effects are shared between different traits um, as opposed to unique to individual traits. Um, and that's something that's particularly interesting to do in this area um, because all different cognitive abilities in different kinds of areas, so things like reading, maths, or whatever else you, you want to, to, to study, um, they all seem to follow broadly very similar sorts of patterns which is to say that there are abilities in which people vary very widely, some people are very good, some people struggle, and some everywhere in between. Um, and most of that variation within each area, for you know, reading or maths or whatever it is, um, tend to be unique to it, but they do also correlate quite substantially. So this um, is what we call general cognitive ability, or G, um, which is just the, the sort of portion of the variation uh, within the different domains which are shared between them. And when we look at this in the context of a twin study, we find that most, if not all, of the genetic influences in each area tend to be shared rather than unique. So it's not that there are genes for reading or genes for maths or genes for memory, for example. Um, there are sort of more, um, sort of more, more general influences which are shared between different things. So where does face recognition fit into this kind of pattern of results? Um, that's exactly what we wanted to, to look at. Um, first of all, we found that um, face recognition is not completely independent from, from other things, so it, it does um, share some of the same influences as, as other abilities. And likewise, per the standard pattern, um, it does have a, a considerable amount of genetic influence on it. it its heritability um, is, is quite substantial. Um, but very unusually, face recognition is um, independent in terms of most of its genetic influences from other things. So we find that most of the genes, therefore, um, or most of the genetic influences which um, help to influence things like reading, maths, memory, spatial ability and, and other things don't influence face recognition, or at least to any, not to anything like the same extent. And most of the genetic influences on face recognition seem to be unique to it. And finally, what can we take away from um, your research? Uh, potentially quite a lot of things, and of course it, it's early days. Um, but first of all, um, because some people do struggle quite a lot with, with face recognition, of course, um, they can take heart from um, the knowledge that it uh, seems to be largely unrelated to other things, to, to difficulties in, in other areas. But more generally, with this kind of research, it um, allows us to understand quite a lot of the data we have and a lot of the new findings that will come in over the years. Um, so if we know that A is related to B but isn't related to C, that, that kind of thing, then that sort of imposes a kind of structure on what we know so that we know what sorts of patterns to look for. So as and when specific genes are identified, for example, which influence ability in one area, we know what other sorts of things to look for and you know, which, which areas like face recognition perhaps might not tend to be related to the sort of same sorts of things which influence other areas.